Welcome to Red Gum Barbecue. I'm owner pit master Martin Goffin, and today we're going to set up a kettle with the snake method and a bullet smoker with the minion method. So let's get cracking. What I like to do with the snake method to begin with is set up a row of two beads, bead after bead after bead after bead around the circumference of the kettle. And then once I've done that, I like to put a bead on top. And what's really neat about this, because they're the same size and they're the same shape and they give off the same amount of heat, is that you can get quite scientific with the way you set these things up. If you want it to burn with more heat, you put more beads in. If you want to slow it down or give out less heat, you put less beads in. You can get yourself a book and you can start writing down what you've did and what you did different next time and next time. What chips did you use? Did you use chunks? Um, what type of beads did you use? Did you use, you know, coconut shell beads versus some other type of beads? So you can get quite scientific about it. Next step is, what am I going to do to provide flavour? So beads in themselves don't really give off any sort of flavour. They're just some, they're just inert, they give off heat. So what you need to do next is choose, you know, what type of wood. Do I want to use chips? Do I want to use chunks? Do I want to use fruit wood? Do I want to use hard wood? You know, you can play around with wood flavours with this as well, which is really, really cool. What I did when I first started cooking on a kettle was I tried lots of different things until I found something that I liked. And that took a, took a while. And that's what keeps you interested with cooking on a, on a kettle, is that you can just, you know, change things up, do things differently, add more, more fuel, less fuel, different flavoured wood, and essentially come up with your own thing in your backyard. So that's where we're at with this. So next step, what we need to do is add a water tray in. So, oh, water tray. People say you can put, you know, put beer in it or, you know, apple juice. I think you don't really get a lot of flavour passed on from the water tray. So I just put water in it, save myself a few quid. Anyway, let's pop it in. Let's get ourselves some water. And let's fill it up. So like I've said before in other videos, moisture in a pit is amazing for getting smoke into your meat. So we like moisture in and around our meat. So what this will do is provide that moisture. Also, it will provide a bit of a barrier or heat shield from this really intense heat from our heat source, which is our beads, to our meat. So you really need to be putting one of these in when you're doing anything on a, on a kettle. Next thing we do, we've got some beads already lit. And I like to use a little pair of tongs for this process just by putting a few beads at the beginning of my snake and we get it going. So, next step is put your grate back on. And we're all set up. Meat goes on there, then your lid goes on and you can set your dampers so you get airflow going through your kettle. So I'm just gonna open up this top one all the way. And then if you come down, I'm gonna, that's currently closed, I'm now opening it up. So air's getting drawn in and then out. So if you wanna cool it down, you just close off your dampers. If you wanna heat it back up, you open them up. But this will affect your draw. So that's it really. Let's get this up to 225 to 275, those magic numbers. And uh, let's cook some Q. So that was the snake method, and we're now gonna crack on and do the minion method in a bullet smoker. First thing we do, obviously you got your, you got your bullet, it's already built up. You take the top off. That exposes the area where you're gonna build your coals. So what you need is a three kilo bean tin. You take the top off and you take the bottom off, and what I like to do with this is pop it in the middle and you'll see why in a second. Then I get the coals. These are beads, robot turds, whatever you want to call them. And you put them around the edge. Keeping your bean tin in the middle. So, spread them around. Keep them, spread them around. Nice even layer. Mm -hmm. 
So that's your charcoal basket on the bottom of your bullet smoker. Spread them around. Perfect. Last time I used chunks, I'm now going to use, use some chips. So these are chips, you just get them from your local hardware store. I think these are hickory. I don't really use hickory that often, I like to use Australian natives. Um, but you can get this sort of stuff from your hardware store. So, I just like to pop them around the edge. I haven't soaked these. These are going straight on dry. You can soak them a little bit if you want to. Um, if it's an Australian native hardwood, I'll tend to not soak them just because they are so hard that they don't tend to take on a lot of uh, moisture. So just putting them around the edge. So one of the reasons why you might want to soak your chips is that it will give you a longer smoke time. So these will start to smolder, give on, giving off plenty of smoke, and eventually they will start to ignite and then burn down. Um, it will just elongate that smoke if you put them in, soak them in water. So that's why you do that. Okay, next step, really simple. You've already lit your, your uh, chimney of coals. You grab it, and you just pop it in the middle of your bean tin. Fill it up. So that's filled up. Pop it back down. And what you need to do, get yourself a set of tongs, lift it out. There you go, rocking and rolling. The rest of it back on. And away you go, really. Next step is, there is, A water pan in this. I mean, it's just going to add a little bit of water to it. Moist meat takes on more smoke. This will also provide a heat shield from that direct heat which is underneath your piece of meat to protect it. So let's just pop a little bit of water in there. Water's gone in. Then you pop your shelves back on. And the next. Pop your lid on. And now you're smoking. So if you like what you've seen, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel. If you've got any comments or any questions, just leave them in the comment box and I'll see you on the next one.